Hello, and welcome to Local Listens. On this week's episode, we have Kevin White of Washington hardcore punk band FCON. We talk about the history of the band, the scene throughout the Pacific Northwest, stories from on tour, and so much more. Other bands are mentioned throughout the episode, and you can find the full list and links to them in the episode description. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Local Listens. So glad you guys could join in. I am Bailey from Bailey Ukulele. And I'm Shane from Sanatorium Hill. And this week we have... Kevin White from local band FCON. Thanks for uh, joining us today. The first thing I have written down, what the fuck does FCON mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, okay. So it's, it's, it's all in like the first track on like our... Uh, full-length record that we put out our LP that you can pick up a vinyl or you can find on Bandcamp or Spotify or whatever um but um you know it it's it it, it stands for four cops one nigga which is like what it is it's it, if you if you look at like any sort of police brutality or any sort of like um example like you look at like the whole summer it's always odds it's always four to one it's never just like a situation even in in the existence of being like a person of color where it's always just like one one to one odds there's always everything stacked against you um you know that systemic racism is more than just like one specific thing it's usually like uh you know it's not just police brutality it's also um not being able to get like a specific job that you want it's like uh you know, going to the corner store and having interactions with people in public. Um, it's, uh, you know, your your mortgage, it's, you know, your health care. It's, it's more, more than just one-on-one. And um, one thing that, like, a lot of people, uh, especially just hearing us on record instead of, like, you know, coming and seeing us live, is that a lot of our songs are also from the perspective of a person of color, which would be me. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. oh, there you go. Right on. That's really cool. I, I I always love learning people's backstories to their band names because some people have like the strangest names and they're like, how in the world did you did you think of that one? Yeah, That's yeah really absolutely. Cool, it's like just like one of those things where it was just like, you know, you're sitting in a room with a bunch of people and like somebody like just like says something and like the light bulb goes off and just like a quick little little tangent. We originally, when we first started doing shows. Uh, we wanted to do like the full band name on like flyers, but you know, you don't want like the, like the booker or like the venue to like get in trouble for something like that. But you know, that makes sense. Yeah. There's like a difference between like, you know, having like a point and then just like being edgy and being edgy isn't necessarily (laughs) like my thing, you know? (laughs) All right. I'm not 14 anymore, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It's like the same reason why like NWA is known as NWA. Absolutely. Right. So, how long has FCON been a band? Uh, yeah, we first formed in 2014. Damn. Wow. Yeah. So, it's been going on eight years now. Shoot, we need to get our shit together. <laughs> <laughs> like, we were just like, dang, we have not been doing it that long. Way to go. I mean, in reality, I haven't been doing it, like, that long either. I mean, FCON's, like, the only band I've, like, ever been in. So, I mean, eight years... Plus, just, like, being active as, like, a punk rocker, like, in the scene. I mean, like, I've only, like, really been active, like, in the Washington scene for, like, the past, like, eight years. So, right. I mean, you know, if, if I could do it, anybody else could do it. Dylan and I, that's, like, our that's like our only, like, real, like, first, like, band that we had, you know? Whereas, like, Brett and, like, Trevor kind of, like, played music with, like, other bands before that. So, you know. Gotcha. That's awesome. Back in 2014. Like, what band was I in? I'm pretty sure at that time, probably in some, like, alternative band doing, like, White Stripes covers. I was in a really shitty beach rock band in 2014 at my high school. Yeah, see, at least Kevin's doing it right. He's sticking with one fucking (laughs) thing. (laughs) Well, I mean, like, you know, I wish that I had, like, you know, the experience... I mean, I also was, like, super late, like, doing all that. I mean, I mean I'm, like, 34 now. I mean, we didn't start FCON until I was, like, 26 years old? 27? Yeah, I was 27. So, yeah, it was, like, you know, people, you know, I was old getting into that by, by, by the time, like, you know, you start your first band, like, 27 years old, you know, by society standards, like, 
you know, you're supposed to get like laughed at doing that. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, there's there's people that are like growing out of the scene and shit by, by the like time. their mid twenties. Yeah, you know I mean? Exactly. <laughs> right. Well, I say you're never too old to start. Yeah, I mean, you got to start Same. somewhere. Yeah, right. I mean, that was um, that was like my thing, you know. And then like uh, my drummer Brett, like, like he um, he was like, hey man, like don't worry about it, like. You know, uh, Joe Strummer didn't start the Clash until he was like 27, and like Tim Armstrong didn't start like Rance until he was like 27. So I was like, "Oh shit!" Well, in that case, like, <laughs> you're good to go. Yeah, exactly. So hell yeah, you like obviously do vocals. Do you play any instrument as well? Well, um, I uh, as far as like playing musical instruments, I was like playing trumpet for a bit when I was like much younger in like school band and stuff like that, but like. During the pandemic, I actually um, started picking up the bass, and I uh, was doing pretty well with that, but once, like, protesting started happening, like, I pretty much, like, put that on the back burner, <laughs> and, I, and I have neglected it for, like, quite a while, and you pick that thing up, actually. <laughs> yeah, when, when all the protests and stuff started happening, I had a bunch of projects that, like, I was telling myself I was going to do once I got, like, laid off and COVID hit. Exactly. And then all that just got back, like, put on the back burner. And I was like, I guess I'm going up to Seattle every day for, like, a month. Let's do this. Exactly. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, I'm going to, like, I had, like, plans to, like, start streaming. Like, I was going to play, like, a bunch of, like, old PlayStation 1 RPGs, like Final Fantasy Seven and, like, all those. And just, like, stream them on, like, oh. Facebook or whatever. And then, like, do, like, podcasts and, like, start another band and, like learn bass and then like as soon as all that started happening i was like oh no 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 yeah like, <laughs> the world has more important things happening right now like oh absolutely right. yeah right i will say it's really awesome that you're learning the bass though because i swear when i go on facebook or somewhere and i look at like the musician ads it, they always say we need a screaming vocalist or we need a bass player or everyone drummer. needs them Right, or a drummer, right. <laughs> so you're good, man. You were in the bass, and you'll have like 10 bands wanting you to join. <laughs> the Seattle-Tacoma punk scene really follows that stereotype of like, oh, so there's four drummers? Cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, we got to put Bremerton in that, too, because like... Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. Ian's doing like quadruple duty on drums on like certain bands, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. I went like four years ago... I had a band approach me, and they were like, hey, you play the drums, right? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, we want you to be a part of our band. You should come audition. And I was like, all right, what kind of music? And they're like, we play pop punk. And I was like, great. Now I'm, I'm in that wheelhouse. I'll come try out. And I get there, and there's three other drummers there. And I'm like, oh, I see. You're going to pick which drummer you like the best? And they go, no, 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 no. We want all four of you to be in the band. Oh, what? They the wanted four drummers, three bass players, two guitar players, and two singers to be in the band. I can't. I can't do this. Like, so, like, too much. Slipknot cover band? Yeah. No, it was... You know, <laughs> like, seriously, that's what it felt like. Damn. It was, like, way too many members. And I, and at that moment, I went... And that's when you know that really everybody is looking for drummers because they have four drummers in their band. So if one falls out, oh, well, they have three more. I was, so I was thinking about this the other day. Like, speaking of, like, Slipknot and stuff like that, like... Yeah. You know, like, there's got to be somebody out there that's, like... When you ask them, like, what their favorite band is, like, what got them, like, into music, or, like... And this is going to sound like I'm being, like, a gatekeeper, but, like, at the same time, there's somebody out there that's, like, oh, yeah, Headstrong by Trapped? Yeah, that's <laughs> what made me pick up, like, a guitar and want to be, like, a musician. <laughs> that's my favorite band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, talk about um... a band that just, like, spiraled out of fucking control in the last couple oh, of yeah. years. Out of nowhere. Seriously. You know, times are tough when you're playing the casino buffet circuit with the uh, lead singer from Stained. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's actually a good segue into what we can talk about now, which is what are your favorite bands? Oh, um, see, I love like, are we talking like strictly like punk or are we talking like? Not necessarily. Oh, it can be anything. Let's see here. Um, probably like my favorite like punk band of all time is Poison Idea from Ooh. Portland. Poison Idea is like a is like an animal that's like they're like it's like nihilism and like a lot of like hatred stuff in like punk, but you know, it's also like you watch like documentaries or like live shows of those of those dudes and like 
you can't question like if they like live that life or not. Not that they were like shitty people or like or like you know not like Gigi Allen like nihilist, but like the music is just like it's all about like addiction and like just being down and out and like you know just like shitty things that you see like in front of you and it's like anti-racism and like it's just, it's just so intense like there's no other band like from that era that like to me like matches that but at the end of the day there's like like the the sense of like you know uh you and i have been through like the same thing and shit's gonna get better after this you know yeah. um I'm trying to think um other bands i really like um there's products of waste. They're from my, they're like a hardcore band. Um, uh, uh, shit. That's like off the top. Sonic Youth is like one of my favorite bands of all time. Yeah. I saw them open for, uh, I lived in Vegas for like probably like 10 years. And I saw them, uh, open for Pearl Jam at the MGM Garden Arena in like 2005 and like changed my life. Um, uh, Iggy and the Stooges. Um, oh, yes. Mm-hmm. I'm a sucker for like, Stuff like Caius, um, Ooh. like Stoner Street Rock, like Desert Rock, yeah. I guess they call it, like Caius, like Fu Manchu. Try and think of like uh, other stuff. Um, the Riverdales is like a really cool band I, that I caught during like the pandemic. It's like uh, they're like a Ramones worship band. Um, Good Riddance, Horse the Band, yep. Converge, all kinds of stuff. Damn. I'm all over the place, but it. Most of my favorite mu- music is like hip hop and like hardcore punk. <laughs> all right, awesome. I'm 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 all about it. <laughs> but like Poison Idea and like Bat Religion would be like the two like to me like the best like punk bands like my favorites. Hell yeah, I love Bat Religion. I've seen I saw them play a few years ago in Auburn at the White River Amphitheater. Oh, uh-huh. Such a, it was so fun. Oh yeah, I've probably seen them probably more than like any other like punk band and yeah they're good like every time they've i've never every seen them time, play like yeah. that show so like what would be then because you were just talking about how you've never seen them do a bad show and stuff but i was just thinking like what would you say would be like the best show you've ever played you think best show i've ever played yeah Oof. that's a i can probably think of like two um we got to open for uh pairs and okay. uh, and Valiant Thor at the Fun House slash El Corazon. It, it was with our friends um, Spit in the Well. They got the open as well in a band called Bigfoot Accelerator. And okay. uh, we were like the opener opener. And I just remember just like there were just like so many people there. And it was like so many friends. And it was just we were just on it because we were just like so stoked to play and we were just like synced in, you know, one of those like 100 percent like you watch a movie about like music and like you see like the band playing and everything's like in slow motion and like the like spits flying and like, yeah, it's just it's it's it was like one of those. I It's hard to like Got describe it. it. It's just like you were just so yeah, dialed yeah. in as like a band and like, there was like no fuck ups. And then oh. um, that must the, be nice. The dream show. Uh, yeah, like, <laughs> like, just like the the one is the one in a million. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. And then most fun was like, <sighs> um, I don't know. There's just playing in anywhere in like White Center, which is like a, our like home, like city, I guess. In like in Washington, like anytime oh, we yeah. play like in like our own like home home turf, like they're always fun or yeah wild or whatever, you know. So. I feel that. Shane, is that how it is for you when you went, when you went and played in Wisconsin? Was it kind of the same, the oh, same we, thing where it was kind of like home turf type of deal? Oh, not at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> we, yeah, we flew back to uh, play a show with Escape from the Zoo in Milwaukee, and like two people I knew showed up. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, it was. And then everybody else was there for Escape from the Zoo. Oh yeah, like we met some great people, but like. The people that came there that we knew to see us were people that, like, drove there with us. <laughs> Got it. So, it was fucking weird. I really... Yeah. I, feel, I feel you, where it's like, you... Where it's like, yeah... I think we did, like, a... Like, something similar. We played, like, a... Like, a like seven-day, like, wa- tour through, like, Washington. Where we did, like... 
Seattle and then like uh like Bremerton, like Aberdeen, Olympia, and then like we came back and we played like the Kraken one day. I think like maybe like ten people showed up to it. <laughs> it was like our tour oh, yeah. homecoming from like our Washington tour. Ah, <laughs> uh, we like two years ago, Shane and I did a similar thing where we decided we were going to do a tour, but only in Washington because we figured it'd be cheaper. And huh, we did we did a show in Tacoma, we did one in Olympia, we did, and then we did one in Bremerton. I think I don't think we did one in Seattle. I think we had plans to, but we could never get a Seattle date together. Yeah. But I think we only did Tacoma, Olympia, and, and Bremerton. But it was just funny, though, because, like, I don't know, it, it's just a funny story to tell people, like, yeah, I've been on tour before. Where'd you go? Oh, I went to Tacoma, Olympia, <laughs> Bremerton. Like, places I go, like, all the time. But, but yeah. Know. But sometimes you gotta do it like that, especially, like... Right? Like, you know, we did that probably in our... Within, like, the first year of us, like, being a band, you know? And it's, yeah. like... You know, we didn't, we had never played, like, you know, Aberdeen or, like, any right. spots because we had, like, no reason to, but, like, it was just, like, fuck it. Like, why not, do just do seven days? Like, if we really need to, like, if you have to, like, go to work or whatever, like, the next day, you can still, like, go to work the next day if you need to, you know? Right. That so, was kind of my thought process when I started our tour was, like, then you can be at home on the weekdays, and then we just go play a show every Saturday, and sort of knew it that way, and, like, it totally worked. It was a really fun tour, and it got us playing venues that we haven't really been able to play. Like, the venues that we did play, I think that was my first time playing in each one of those venues. You mentioned playing a show in Aberdeen. How's the scene like down there? Cause, uh... Oh, that was, like, years ago. I mean, um, we played, like, at the Eagles Hall. This is, like, in 2014, and, um, I mean... I don't really know many people from, like, out there outside of, like, Zach from, like, the product Limbs Records and, like, Motar and everything like that. But, like, I, and I just, you know, I don't really have my finger on the pulse as much as I, as much as I should these days, you know? All right, yeah. I cause... don't know that I know anybody from Aberdeen, like, now. Like, I don't know that I can, if I played a show there, I don't know how many of my friends would show up. Whenever I think of Aberdeen, I just think of how almost every building is the same color, tannish yellow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) That's where all the grunge bands are from. (laughs) Pretty much. Everyone. Every (laughs) Every one of them, yep. I just assume they're all from Aberdeen. Yeah. (laughs) You you walk in and it says, welcome to Aberdeen, home of grunge. And then you walk like two blocks and it's welcome to Hopium. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Right. So... FCON, you guys, do you guys only have the one record out, or? Yes, we do only have the one full length. There is a, there are people who have hard copies of the, uh, of the demo floating around out there. Ooh. Ooh. Gotta try to get my hands on that. <laughs> yeah, I know, like, really, I'm like, ooh, I need that copy. It's, yeah, it's like, um, it's, it's, it actually has, like, two songs i think that we that we don't even like playing like in our set anymore oh. um one of them's not even like on the full length and that was back when we were like a five piece so damn yeah. yeah damn well you know if anybody out there has a copy of that demo you're one of the lucky ones yeah also send it my way <laughs> super right. secret merchandise yeah send us a copy yeah Speaking of merch, you guys just released a bunch of new merch, didn't you? Yeah, we um we put out the the uh, Liquid Fury like long sleeves with the uh, design, which was uh, done by uh, the, sa- the same person. I don't know if y'all are familiar with our with our buds, uh, Boss's daughter from Reno, Nevada. Oh yeah, yep. yeah, it's done by the same person that like designed all of their merch. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's awesome. I was just going to say, touching on your merch, my favorite piece of merch you guys have ever put out is your White Claw, White Center fucking F-Con shirt. Oh, yeah. Or whatever that was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. That's... I love I love that piece of merch. <laughs> yeah, that was... um. I, I, I can remember when we decided to do those because when we originally put those out, uh, we printed like i think it was like six long sleeves 
that yeah. because we did like the short sleeves and we did like the long sleeve tees, but we did right. uh, six of them that were that were black with like gold print on them, oh. and like we just put them like in the merch box like it, like randomly, so yeah. it was kind of like a golden ticket like Willy Wonka type deal. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> Hell yeah, that's awesome. That's so cool. Yeah, people were like, "Let me get them." I'm like, "Well, right. we only have six of them, and it's like buy, uh, you know, order, you know, first come first serve." Yeah, yeah. And, and just to go back to uh, that person who designed that Liquid Fury um, design, uh, same person who did like Boss's daughter stuff. Dismay Design is the mm-hmm. uh, name of the uh, graphic design company. Okay. Person. <laughs> All right. That's a Dismay des- Design. Dismay. Okay. Just so I can tag that. Cool. Of course. Yeah, I'm. One of these days, I'm gonna get a hold. Of, I want to get a hold of one of those t-shirts. If you, if anyone's got a medium size FCON t-shirt like that, and you have your demo CD, send it to us. Looking <laughs> for all the FCON merch. You guys did a um, Bridge City Sessions uh, as well, yes. didn't you? Yes, we've done two of them. Oh, nice. Yeah, we did. We did two of them. The first one was uh, we did like a two day jaunt with uh, our buddies Mabel's Marbles. Um, they we did Portland, and then and then we did Eugene that night. So in between the Portland gig and the Eugene gig, we did the Bridge City sessions, and then uh, the second time was with our friends in Las Vegas, Anti Vision. And we did like seven. I know we did like twelve days with Antivision down like the West Coast, and then we did like a third day on tour. We did uh, Bridge City Sessions, so we did. I think they're like two years apart. Oh, yeah. yeah. And we also did That's a awesome. uh, we also did a uh, video like Zoom interview with them uh, earlier. I think it got like released like right at the beginning of the pandemic. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm jealous. I want to do. One of those Bridge City sessions sometime. They look like fun. Well, get a hold of get a hold of um Nick Wilson. They're they're always yeah. like they're always willing to like work with people. Yeah. Yeah. Um we've been working on uh getting a hold of them. We like emailed back and forth. Now it's just uh figuring out when we can actually get down there and oh, get yeah. everything well, all set yeah. up. But Yeah, everything got flipped on its head with, with, with all with all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know coronavirus and everything <laughs> so did uh you guys have a chance to play that like bridge city fest that they did no um uh trevor is also in uh generation climb and so they did that and, and yeah. uh brett's also in uh anti-vision so he did one with anti-vision so okay. I, just, I just think we weren't able to figure out like the timing or something like that uh Gotcha. All right. Plus, everybody, I think at that time, like, it was still, like, phase, like, two or something like that. So, okay. we was, like, still trying to be, like, kind of, like, careful. Yeah, as, yeah. Like, you know, practicing and, you know, getting together and stuff like that. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. See, Shane, the, the nice part about you and I is that all our band members for our bands live in our house. Yeah. So we're good to go. <laughs> nice. But yeah, Brett and I, yeah, Brett and I live together. We we've been living together for almost like seven years now. But um, there you go. You know, and then Trevor lives like right down the street from us. But you know, sometimes it's, it's still like you know you got to be like extra extra careful. You know. Right. Oh yeah. We all still kind of like take the shit like seriously, as everyone everybody else should. Yeah. You know? right, totally. Of course. Yeah. Even like living together doesn't mean we actually practice <laughs> <laughs> okay I'm we're just a like man man <laughs> and i don't practice so there's so many times where i'm like hey i got a song idea we should work on that and then like a month later i find the same scrap of paper and i'm like oh yeah i guess i should work on this huh <laughs> there you go look i swear it's like i always make the joke though that because i'm a soul act like I'm I'm one of the best bands because all my members will show up on time. But then <laughs> but then I always make the other joke of actually no one ever shows up on time to my band practices. So. <laughs> it doesn't it's a double edged sword. There was uh 
a local band back in Madison that um, I used to work at this bar running sound and they would come through and play. And I can't remember the name of the band. I remember Jason being in it. But they always had the same drummer and then one day they showed up with no drummer and I was just like, hey, like what's going on with the show? And he's like, oh yeah, the drummer was always late, so we just got a drum machine, so the drum machine would be on time. But that's, <laughs> that same show, the drum machine didn't work. Like, oh, no. <laughs> they had like technical issues, so it was just like, all right, no drummer today, cool. But it was so <laughs> funny, because he was so confident, like, yeah, we fired our drummer, because he'd be here late. I'm like, okay, cool, now you got no drummer. That's so funny. <laughs> I remember like, Two years ago, I was in a band called the Hot Monsters. And, oh, uh, oh, okay, for sure. Hell yeah. I yeah. Try. Yeah, so I was in that band for like six or seven months. We didn't last very long because apparently they thought that I was too much involved in the folk punk scene to me and Hot Monsters. But anyway, um, when I was in the band, though, I got hired as their drummer because their old drummer wasn't showing up to the gigs on time or, or wouldn't show up at all. Like, we had a show planned... And it was the it was the first show I know I was ever gonna go see them perform. It was before I was in the band, and it was the Hot Monsters, uh, the some some other band I'm spacing on the name, and then Bailey Ukulele, which is me. And I got to the show, and I was the only one that got to play because the Hot Monsters drummer just didn't show up to the show. Said he wasn't coming. Said he didn't want to play in the show tonight. And then the other bands didn't show up at all. So it was literally just me playing for like 30 minutes, and then that was it. That was the entire show. <laughs> it was really strange. Damn. And so we, me and the Hot Monsters, um, Jeff from the Hot Monsters, who's like kind of the leader of the band, he was like, hey, we had already been talking about me joining the band playing drums. And so that night he was like, okay, so this is it. This is where I'm telling you you're in the band. doesn't matter what you sound like. You're going to be better than this guy if you can show up on time to practice. And I was like, yeah, I'll be there. And I, go, <laughs> and I was like but I don't have a car at the moment. He goes, perfect, then I can pick you up and you'll make sure you're on time to practice. I'm like, great. <laughs> so then, yeah, so then I joined the band for like six or seven months and then we had a falling out. But yeah, it was just funny. Like, they literally only hired me, they hired me at first literally because I didn't show up on time. <laughs> <laughs> uh... <laughs> Which I think is well, speaking of which, um, like hiring new members, has FCON had the same members the whole time? Oh, uh, no. Um, so when all the way back in the year 2014, um, so, uh, myself and Dylan are the only like two founding members. And then we had Tom and Mike and, uh, Kevo. And so we had two guitar players a bass player and a drummer, but uh, Brett joined the band as the drummer probably. I want to say two months into when we were like actively gigging, so he might as well be a founding member. And <laughs> um, uh, Trevor came in maybe. I want to say two years in. I want to say he's probably been like in the band three. Three years, four years, maybe. Okay. All yeah, right. I, it gets a little hazy there. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's punk time. No, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it blends together. Right. I think COVID time and punk time are basically the same thing, except one of them is more scary. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'll let everyone at home figure out which one is the scary one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was like my whole thing. Is just like, you know, at, 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 of course, like when you know, the pandemic hit and everything like that, I was like, oh, shit, like, you know, both of... Because I do, like, security, like, at, like, uh, music venues. So, and that was, like, kind of, like, my career for, like, the last, like, almost, like, decade. So, you know, of course, having that and, like, playing live music just, like, taken away from me in, like, a flash at first, I was like, no! And I was like, wait, this is gonna be, like, a good, like mental health break from not having to like be around like so many like drunk idiots like every yeah. day oh yeah every day and like you know i can like catch up on like all the things uh, like all the tv and like video games and like 
music, you know, that like I miss out on from like so many years of like working, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's how it was with me, because I was a stagehand and an audio engineer. Yeah. Like, so it's yeah, just yeah. like, cool. Like, at first, it was like, all right, two weeks, cool. Like, I can deal with not working, like, 80-hour weeks for, like, <laughs> fucking two weeks. Like, this is going to be cool. And then it just kept going, and it got to the point that mm -hmm. I'm sitting here like, come on, just let me build a stage. Like, <laughs> just let me set up a lighting rig. Like, I just want to... <laughs> Let, let, just turn on a PA system. Come on, just make it loud. <laughs> just <laughs> please. <laughs> We're not going to use it for any shows. Just let me set it up and then I'll tear it right down. Yeah, like I just want to hear that, PA. like the pop of the cones and turn it right back <laughs> off. I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. So, what was that? There was a picture I saw. Something about stagehands, and it was like if stagehands built a city, it'd be the most efficient city in the entire world. <laughs> oh yeah, like that. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, and that's so true. All the stoplights will be timed perfectly. I think, <laughs> I think maybe like, I, I've well, I would, I think I've seen Shane work firsthand. Um, I believe it was the uh, Belltown Block Party. Ooh, yeah. With, uh, like, the dwarves and shit? Yeah. Like, uh, not last year, but, like, a couple years ago? That huh. was, yeah, like, two, like, two, three years ago? 2019? I think so. Because it was, like, the dwarves and pop and break. Yeah, that was, a, oh, that was fun. We played, like, super early. I think we were, like, the first ones to play, like, outside. We show up, I think that it was, like, we were supposed to play at, like, two. But, like, we, like, rolled up and, like... It wasn't, like, the stage wasn't even, like, set up yet. So, like... Oh, man. It, it, like, I think y'all were, like, behind by, like, like, a half hour, like, 45 minutes or something like that. And, like, let me tell you, when it was, like, all said and done, like, it, it, it was just awesome just being in Belltown, like, outdoors, like, screaming, at, like, fuck the SPD. Like... <laughs> Like, in the middle of downtown Seattle, and, like, bike cops are going by, and, like, all, like, you know, like, the like the downtown drunks are, like, mixed in with, like, all, like, the, all, like, the normies who are, like, pulling out their cell phones and, like, taking pictures and shit. Yeah. It was just great. It was, yeah. like, all the people, yeah, like, awesome. like, in their apartments and shit. It was great. It was just cool. It was very cathartic. Yeah, that, that yeah. show was cool, because I believe we had two stages going yeah, at that one. There was the other one down by, like, where um, Shorty's is now. So it was, like, awesome because you had, like, the big stage down there. And then there was, like, down, one down by, like, where, well, more like where, like, Screwdriver Bar is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, it was a real cool setup. Yeah, and they had, uh, they had the skateboarding. Yeah, like the half pipe. Yeah. 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 That's cool. Yeah, so it was, like, the dwarves. God, who else? It was. Die nasty, toe cutter. Oh yeah, toe cutter hey. played. Yeah, that was uh, a fucking awesome show. I remember being so exhausted. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, I, I ended imagine. up having to go to work like that night. So like, oh, oh damn. So as soon as he like played, I like stuck around for like an hour and then like cut out. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, because I was like, I, when you... I like forced myself because I was like, if I'm going to like be here. I'm going to be, like, too tempted to get, like, fucked up for work, so I got to go, guys. <laughs> <laughs> right? When you were talking about the festival and how, like, when you got there, like, the stage wasn't quite ready, it reminded me of when, like, two years ago I played this festival in uh, in Tacoma called uh, Music in Heart and Wright Park. It was, like, this music festival that my friend was putting on, and he goes, I want you to open up the show at 10 a.m. And I was like, okay, 10 a.m., I'll be there. We'll open up the show. We'll get this stuff going, whatever. He's like, I need you to hype up the crowd. And I'm like, I can do that. That's my specialty. Let's go. Yeah. I get there, and literally all they have built, like, I wish Shane, I wish your crew could have been there to do it because that <laughs> would have already been done. Because literally I got there, no offense to these people, but because it was their first year of doing it. But when I got there, all they had was the platform when I showed up at 10. Oh. 
I showed up at like That's nine rough. nine forty five because I lived like super close and he was like, Don't worry, like you can literally come at ten if you want to. Like it doesn't matter. Like you just as soon as you show up, we're gonna put you on stage, sound check you, and then you're just gonna start. And I'm like, Okay, sweet. So I got there like nine forty five and all they had built was the platform and I'm like, Yeah, in fifteen minutes you're gonna get all the sound, all the lighting, all the mics, everything ready. I don't think so. We ended up starting <laughs> at like noon. Because they couldn't figure stuff out. It was it was awful. I had, like, my grandparents there and, like, all these people there to come see me at 10 a.m. And they're like, okay, well, we're going to go get breakfast and go get coffee. And we'll come back in, like, two hours. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> bye. Like, oh, Damn. I felt so bad. Yeah, I really wish your crew could have been there to set it up. You guys would have been done in, like, an hour. And let, you let's, are, let's, you let's just keep efficient. in mind that, that uh, this, this sounds like we're... Uh... You know, talk smack to like you know. No, people, no, I'm not trying to talk any smack. And, like festivals and stuff. And most of the time, it's it, usually us. Usually, it's the bands that are like, no, 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 this we're is true. Take our time. <laughs> right, and this is. True. Oh yeah. Usually, the bands are like, hang on, I need to, I need to do this one thing really quick, and that t- it'll take me probably several hours. Test your gear before going to the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's factual. Or maybe smoke a cigarette 20 minutes before. Yeah. Um, yes. Sort of yes. 45 seconds before. <laughs> yeah. So does uh, Afcon have any stuff in the works? I mean, we're practicing. Uh, so we, we've been able to jam, like, recently. Um, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be like that person that's like, you know, every, every, every fucking Facebook band page where it's like big things in the works guys <laughs> stay tuned brother like no it's like you know we're working on stuff we, we, we we're definitely like getting back in our groove um yeah you know obviously you know I, I feel like there's like zero pressure on like anybody to like really crank anything out but yeah. you know uh, i think um all of us as a whole have enough inspiration over like the last like year that we've been like sitting on some stuff, so when the time yeah. comes, we'll be ready. Yeah, <laughs> right. You're you're preparing for when the world reopens. Oh yeah, there's there you plenty of shit in the last like year that you got stuff to write about. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Seriously. Or even just like like I said, not having like a job. I haven't worked since like probably when I got laid off in like la- like last March. Um, but um, you know when you're alone with like your your thoughts and like your head and like you really get like deep down and start you know you have like the time to like get more in tune with like your like imagination and shit because you're not like you know not working has like gotten me more like and you know back to like really being like in tune with like things that used to inspire me and like i'm less like clouded i guess yeah. so it's not even necessarily even things that are going on like right now it's it, it's just like even things that like I sat on like ideas I had that like I've just like revisited and I was like wow that's actually like something I should really touch up on probably you know yeah yeah here is a song off F Con's so self-titled much, uh, album entitled No Guts No Glory. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of Local Listens, and next week we have Al or Rocco of Rocky Start Racket and the Mystery Monkeys. Hope you tune in next time and have a great and music-filled week.